In my legal practice, I've seen businesses fail because they did not take privacy into account. I've seen customers walk away from deals because of privacy issues, and I've seen acquisitions fail due diligence because of privacy. Hi, my name is David Fraser. I'm a privacy internet and technology lawyer with the Canadian law firm McGinnis Cooper. I regularly work with startups, investors, and acquirers to provide advice on privacy compliance. I also teach internet and media law at the Schulich School of Law at Dalhousie University. In this channel, I try to provide educational and informative content about Canadian privacy and technology law. Today, I'm going to be talking about privacy by design for startups to help embed privacy into growing and high growth businesses. Episode two of season four of HBO Silicon Valley provides a really good case study on the possible consequences of not getting privacy compliance right. Hi. It appears that 33% of your users are under the age of 13. It's also apparent that you have no parental permission requirements in place. You're going to want to sit down for this. Are you familiar with COPPA? Who? That's the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act. This act establishes strict guidelines to protect the privacy of younger children on the internet. You are in gross violation of this act. Okay, what's going on? How serious is this? Each violation of COPPA carries a penalty of $16,000. So we're fined $16,000. Oh no, I hope they take cash. $16,000 per user. Not only each user, each use. So 51,000 estimated under each users times an average 25.6 chat sessions per user times $16,000. $21 billion? What does privacy mean? Well, privacy means different things to different people, and people have wildly variable feelings about privacy. As a founder, you need to understand that and take that into account. In some ways, privacy is about wanting to be left alone, to be not observed or surveilled. It's also about giving people meaningful choices and control. They need to understand what is happening with their personal information, and they should have control over it what they share, and how it's used. They should get to choose whether something is widely disseminated or not. Of course, privacy is also about regulatory compliance. As a founder, you need to make sure your company complies with the regulatory obligations imposed on it. If you're in the business-to-business -business space, you will need to understand the regulatory obligations imposed on your customers. I can guarantee you that your customers will look very, very closely at whether your product affects their compliance with their legal obligations. And they'll walk away if there's a realistic chance that using your product puts their compliance at risk. Privacy is also about trust in a number of ways. If you're in the business to consumer space, your end users will only embrace your product if they trust it. If they know what the product is doing with their information and they trust you to keep that consistent. If you're in the business to business space, your customers will only use your product or service if they trust you. If you're a startup, you don't yet have a track record or wide adoption to speak on your behalf. A deal with a startup is always a leap of faith, and trust has to be built in. And there are a bunch of indicators of trustworthiness. I've advised clients to walk away from deals where the documentation, responses to questions don't suggest privacy maturity. If you've just cut and pasted your privacy policy from somewhere else, we can tell. Privacy is not just security, but security is critical to privacy. Diligent security is table stakes, and a lack of security is the highest risk area. We seldom see class action lawsuits for getting the wrong kind of consent, but most privacy or security breaches are followed by class action lawsuits. Your customers will expect you to safeguard their data with the same degree of diligence as they would do it themselves. In the business to business space, they should be able to expect you to do it even better. You always need to make sure there are no surprises. You need to set expectations and you need to meet those expectations. In my 20 plus years working with companies on privacy, one thing is clear. People don't like it when something is creepy. Usually this is a useless word since the creepy line is drawn very differently for different people. But what I've learned is that where the creepy line is depends on their expectations. 
But things are always creepy or off-putting when something happens with your personal information that you did not expect. As a founder, you really need to realize that regardless of whether or not you care about privacy yourself, your end users care about privacy. Don't believe the hype, privacy is far from dead. If you're in the business to business arena, your customers are going to care very deeply about the privacy and security of the information that they entrust you with. If you have a competitor with greater privacy diligence or a track record, you have important ground to make up. And of course, for founders, getting investment is critical to the success of their business. The investors during your friends and family round, or even seed funding, might not be particularly sophisticated when it comes to privacy. But mark my words, sophisticated funds carry out due diligence and know that privacy failures can often equal business failures. I've seen investments go completely sideways because of privacy liabilities that are hidden in the business. And when it comes time to make an exit via acquisition, every single due diligence questionnaire has an entire section, if not a chapter, on privacy and security matters. The weeks leading up to a transaction are not the time to be slapping band-aids on privacy problems that were built into the business or the product from the very first days. As a founder, you want to make sure that potential privacy issues are at least identified and managed long before that point. I once worked with a founder and CEO of a company who often said that if you're a startup in Canada and your ambition is the Canadian market, you have set your sights too low and you're likely to fail. The world is global and digital is more global than any other sector. You might launch your minimally viable product or experiment with product market fit in your local marketplace, but your prospective customers are around the world. This also means that privacy laws around the world are going to affect your business. If your product or services are directed at consumers, you'll have to think about being exposed to and complying with the privacy laws of every single jurisdiction where your end users reside. That's just the nature of the digital beast. If you're selling to other businesses, each of those businesses are going to be subject to their own local privacy laws that may differ significantly from what you're used to. And once you get into particular niches, like processing personal health information or ed tech, the complexity and the stakes rise significantly. You definitely want to consult with somebody who is familiar with the alphabet soup of PIPEDA, PIPA, CASEL, FIA, GDPR, COPPA, CCPA, CPRA, HIPAA, etc. You're going to want to talk carefully and deeply with your customers to find out what their regulatory requirements are which they then need to push down onto their suppliers like you. The consequences of getting it wrong can be significant. You can end up with a useless product or service, one that cannot be sold or that cannot be used by your target customers. I've seen that happen. A privacy incident can cause significant reputational harm, which can be disastrous as a newcomer in the marketplace trying to attract customers and trying to build trust. Fixing issues after the fact is often very expensive. Some privacy and security requirements may mandate a particular way to architect your backend systems. Some rules may require localization for certain customers' data. And if you did not anticipate that out of the gate, implementing those requirements can be time and resource intensive. Of course, there's always the possibility of regulatory action resulting in fines and penalties. Few things stand out on a due diligence checklist like having to disclose an ongoing regulatory investigation or a hit to your balance sheet caused by penalties. All of these, individually or taken together, can be a significant impediment to closing an investment or financing, and can be completely fatal to a possible exit by acquisition. So what's the way to manage this? It's something called privacy by design, which is a methodology that was originally created in Canada by Dr. Anne Kavukian, the former Information and Privacy Commissioner of Ontario. Here's what it requires at a relatively high level. First of all, you need to be proactive about privacy and not reactive. You want to think deeply about privacy, anticipate issues and address them up front, rather than reacting to issues or problems as they come up. Second, you need to make privacy the default. You need to think about privacy holistically, focusing particularly on consumers and user choice, and setting your defaults to be privacy protective so that end users get to choose whether or not they deviate from those privacy protective defaults. Third, you need to embed privacy into your design and coding process. Privacy should be a topic at every project management meeting. I'll talk about the methodology for that in a couple of minutes. You need to think about privacy as a positive-sum game rather than a zero-sum game. 
Too often, people think about privacy versus efficiency or privacy versus innovation or privacy versus security. You need to be creative and think about privacy as a driver of efficiency, innovation, and security. Fifth, you need to build in end-to-end -end security. As I mentioned before, security may in fact be the highest risk area given the possibility of liability and penalties in this area. You need to think about protecting end users from themselves, from their carelessness, and from all possible adversaries. Sixth, you need to build visibility and transparency. Just about every single privacy law out there requires that an organization be open and transparent about its practices. In my experience, the more proactive an organization is in talking about privacy and security and how they address it, this amounts to a significant leg up compared to anybody else who does not. Seventh and finally, you need to always be aware that end users are human beings who have a strong interest in their own privacy. They might make individual choices that differ from your own privacy comfort levels, but that's human. Always look at your product and all of your choices through the eyes of your human end users. Think about how you would explain your product and services to that end user. Can the choices that you've made in its design be justified to them? A key tool to implement this is to document your privacy processes and build it iteratively into your product development process. For every single product or feature of a product, you need to document what data from or about users is collected, what data is generated, what inferences are made. You'll want to get very detailed knowing every single data field that is collected or generated in connection with your product. Next, you need to carefully document how each data element is used. Why do you need the data? How do you propose to use it? And is it necessary for that product or feature? If it's not must have, but rather good to have, how do you build that choice into your product? You next need to ask, is this data ever externally exposed? Does it go to a third party to be processed on your behalf? Is it ever publicly surfaced? Are there any ways that the data might be exposed to a bad guy or an adversary? In most places, privacy regulations require that you give individual users notice about the purposes for which personal information is collected, used, or disclosed. You need to give users control over this. How are the ob obligations for notice and control built into your product from day one? When a user clicks on a button, is it obvious to them what happens next? Then you'll need to ask, where is the data? Is it stored locally on a device or a server managed by the user or the customer? Is it on servers that you control? Is it a combination of the two? Is the data safe wherever it resides? To some people, local on-device storage and processing is seen as being more privacy protective than storage with the service provider. In some cases, those endpoints are less secure than your data center environment would be, but that also has its own risks that need to be considered. Finally, think about lifecycle management for your data. How long is it retained? How long do you or the end user actually need the information for? If it's no longer needed for the purpose identified to the end user, it should be securely deleted. You'll also want to think about giving the end user control over deleting their own information. In some jurisdictions, this is a legal requirement. Everybody on your team needs to understand privacy as a concept and how privacy relates to their work function. Not everyone will become a subject matter expert, but a pervasive level of awareness is critical. Making sure that you do have subject matter expertise properly deployed in your company is important. You also have to understand that this is an iterative process. Modern development environments can sometimes be likened to building or upgrading an aircraft while it's in flight. You need to be thinking about flight worthiness at every stage. When a product or service is initially designed, you need to go through that privacy design process to identify and mitigate all of the privacy issues. No product should be launched, even in beta, until those issues have been identified and addressed. And then any add-ons or enhancements to that product or service need to go through the exact same scrutiny to make sure that no new issues are introduced without having been carefully thought through and managed. I have seen too many interesting and innovative product ideas fail because privacy and compliance simply was not on the founder's radar until it was too late. I've seen financing deals derailed and acquisitions tanked for similar reasons. Understandably, founders are most often focused on product market fit and a minimally viable product to launch. But you need to realize that a product that cannot be used by your customers or that has significant regulatory and compliance risk 
is not a viable product. I hope this has been of interest. The discussion was obviously at a pretty high level, but my colleagues and I are always happy to talk with startup founders to help assess the impact of privacy and compliance on their businesses. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I read them all and I try to reply to them all as well. If your company needs help in this area, please reach out. And of course, feel free to share this with anybody in the startup community for whom it may be useful. Thanks for tuning in.